I want to show you how I'm connected here first, all of my hardware. Um, so let's start out with my transceiver and I'll have a little video here that you can kind of see how I'm connected. I have my page here with the information, with the specs for you. This is actually a UHF transceiver, so uh, our test is going to be for UHF systems. We can also do an HF test on Pactware, and I'll get into that a little bit later, but it looks a little bit different. So what we have here is my big old transceiver. I have a really big one because I, I use it for um, sometimes high speed tests um, that I've done in the past. So I wanted to show show off this one to you. Um, and then I have this connected to my interface module over a quick disconnect, which by the way, always make sure you have a good shielded cable when you're doing an RFID connection. So uh, this is RTBEN small RFID module with Turk. It's really, uh, really cool. Um, it's got a lot of features. I think it's a very small form factor with a lot of capability. The first two ports, as you can see, my first one is connected to uh, RFID. You can actually do both UHF and HF transceivers on these ports. So um, another cool fact is you can daisy chain up to 32 HF transceivers to m one port. Some competitors can do stuff like that too, but uh, we do it pretty fast over Ethernet. And we have a lot of, uh, well, the fact that our blocks are multi-protocol. So that's really cool. It's easy to work with. Um, I'm also connected here Ethernet out to my computer. It's a Pico style. Um, and then on the top here, I'm connected to my power supply. So I'm, I'm giving 24 volts DC to my block. I do want to point out my power supply because I get a lot of compliments on it. It's kind of cool. It's IP67. It's just, it's completely enclosed. I've got my Pico 2 mini uh, connector here on one side. It, this is a, this is my small one actually. It's a, it's a 2 amp uh, current output. And then on my other side, I actually have uh, a connector going out to my wall outlet for 120 volts AC. So it makes for a very nice, easy to use demo that I can just plug anywhere. You can mount this on a machine directly. So it's convenient for applications where you're doing remote block RFID if you've got, if, and you're dropping things just on an Ethernet network, then you know, you can isolate stuff pretty, pretty easily. All right, so without further ado, let's get into the RFID test. Okay, so I have applied power and I'm connected to my transceiver. I have my IP network going um, on the same network as my module, so I should be good to go. Uh, so first things first is I'm going to open up Turk Service Tool. This is a really neat tool that can help you find uh, your device and give you some options. So I'm going to do a search. There it goes. It found it. That is the IP address that I had already given that TBEN. So if this was your first time using our TBEN or any other interface module that we have, uh, you would have to change the IP address. So you can do that here. And you'd have to give it a name, IP address, there's your MAC address, subnet, and gateway, and you would set in the device. I didn't make any changes, so I need to leave it. Um, okay, and so now that we find it, we found it, we can actually double click on that IP address, and it will take me directly to its internal web server. So you can see the part number here. Um, I would type in the password for Turks. Uh, web server and the password is password so it's very secure um, and here you can see all the parameters available if there are any errors it's going to come up here you can also change um, you can change a lot of the parameters here you notice we have we can have up to 32 transceivers per port so uh, this is pretty cool saves you a lot of time so it's a re really neat tool that you can use okay so let's go on and start our RFID test 
and that's going to be in Pactware 5.0. So make sure that you have the right version of Pactware. It does need to be 5.0. It, the RFID test will not work in 4.1 or 4.2. Uh, uh, this version is actually pretty new. It was barely released maybe a few months ago. So uh, this is very exciting that they've added all of this RFID um, features and parametrization. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Let's right click on host PC and let's add a device. Like you saw earlier, we are working over Ethernet. Click OK. And you'll notice this is actually the IP address for my computer. So let's go ahead and right click on that. Go to additional functions and let's look at the bus address management. Another way to do this is to just double click on my IP address, my Ethernet address there. And it will populate the same page, which is the bus address management page. Okay, so you see this little eye? It's a weird eye. <laughs> uh, click that so we can scan for our devices, and sure enough, here is our TBEN RFID module with the correct address, my computer address. So let's go ahead and add that device to our project tree. Hope you can see that my cursor is acting a little weird. Okay, okay, so this has been added to my project tree. And now what I want to do is click OK down here and kind of exit out of that page so you don't have too much stuff open. If you, if I were to open this up a little bit more, I could see some status information here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close these up a little bit. Okay, and I'm going to close that up. All right. So what I want to do is I want to just click on any of these and I want to connect to my device, to my network. So once I'm connected, what I want what I actually want to do is right click on my device here where it says intern S2 to RFID, go all the way down. Uh, we're going to do a topology scan. So click on that. Bottom left here, you see the play button. It says start scan. So I'm going to press that and, it, and it's going to look at every port and it's going to see if there's anything connected to it. So uh, you saw earlier that I'm connected my transceiver to port zero, the first port. And sure enough, it found it. Great, so I'm going to close out of this. And you'll notice how this is not bolded. That means it's not connected. So I want to connect to it. And it'll take a little while to, to get going here. I want to double click on my transceiver. And it'll ask me, do I want to communicate? Yes. And it's going to take a little while to open that page up. You'll notice that my little wire here connection status turned green so that means I'm live with my hardware so I'll expand that and on the right hand side here you'll see that we have a help section that will go through every parameter click over to antennas there's more parameters that you can set there's a lot of a lot of things that you actually can't see through the web server so just things that you can change as you're um, working with your project and even the LEDs you can change to constant on or constant off. So that's pretty cool. Up here you have options to, um, you can save these settings and, and store them. Um, read data from device, transmit data to device. So that's pretty cool. What we actually want to do is right click on the transceiver over on the left hand side by my project tree. I'm going to go down to additional functions and this is where we're going to start our RFID test. Click on RFID test and you'll see a new page comes up. Okay so once you are at the RFID page 
What you want to do is uh, make sure if you're using, for example, like me, the TBEN-S2-2RFID uh, block, uh, those ports, those uh, RFID ports will take in UHF and HF transceivers. So the default is um, HF. So you got to go back in there, maybe double click on that, and oops. Go to this one that I have highlighted. Double click on that. And you'll notice the operation mode. You'll have to change that from HF compact to HF, UHF compact or UHF extended. And on the right hand side, you have your parameter help menu that can help you uh, navigate what, um, oops, what, uh, what each operation mode means. So go ahead and make that change if you have to. And uh, don't forget to power cycle your whole system and uh, get back online with it. Okay, that was uh, that. Now let's go back to, let's click out of that. So go back to your RFID page. You'll notice these little tags here, um, the tabs that there's one for a logger, tag actions, basic test, HF diagnosis. So you want to make sure you are in the basic test and we can auto hide that. Okay. So once you're here, um, you have this top menu for the RFID page. So first, the, the play button and the stop button are your triggers. So if you have your transceiver set to manually trigger, then you're going to want to uh, make sure you have that on play when you are doing your test. I have mine to continually um, trigger, so it's constantly going. I don't have to trigger it. You can turn your antenna on or off. <clears throat> you can get information from your transceiver, so it'll have status messages that you can actually look at. Um, if you're troubleshooting or something goes wrong, you want to go into your logger and maybe get that transceiver information. Click on that and you'll see it populate down here. You can get the head version that you have and you'll see that came up. You can power cycle and factory reset your transceiver from Pactor as well. So let's go back to the basic test tab and let's do a test. So I actually have my tag sitting right next to my transceiver so um, it's probably going to just populate really fast. So let's just click pull all and sure enough you see all of my tags being read. You see that? Um, I have sometimes some issues with the uh, Pactor here. If um, I don't know about y'all, but if you can't see your read value, try expanding this all the way out or and bringing it back in because I wasn't able to see my tag uh, read earlier. So um, my I'll, I'll I'll go over reading these in a little bit. You actually have a little left and right scroll bar here, <clears throat> and you can bring in these columns. Um, the, your RSSI value and your reads are going to help you understand how your tag is responding to your transceiver. So for example, um, the EPC, by the way, is kind of the, the ID of your transponder, of your tag. So uh, I actually wrote the EPC that I wanted to each tag individually using one of Turk's U Grocket's um, handheld which is really cool. I'll probably do another video demo on that. So um, I, if you're ever doing an RFID test, always make sure you write the tag number that you want and you label your actual tag with a little paper or something um, so you know which tag is responding to what, especially with UHF and if you have multiple tags in, in one area that you're picking up so you're not confused. So um, once you look at your read column, you'll notice that I have some high values. So basically it's reading this tag 11 times um, in one scan. So as, as I've had it, it's, it's read it that many times at once. So you'll notice these tags, um, they're some of my stronger tags and they're sitting closer to it. So. You'll notice um, this one in particular, my 
my 103s and my 102s, I don't know if you can see that here, my 102, yeah. Those are, those are probably my strongest tags that I have. So it's really neat. Um, you can start navigating those tags and, and your application. Um, how is the metal around affecting it? Uh, maybe you've got some temperature issues around your RFID network that you should probably be concerned about uh, on, on how it's affecting your transceiver and your tags. So um, this will do that. Um, <clears throat> if you want to stop pulling, you just click on the pull all button again. You can clear it and you can trash this list and you can start over. So this is a uh, all in all very very cool um, tools that we have through Pactware that will allow us to perform tests um, for new projects um, for RFID. So uh, hope you like this video. This pretty much concludes um, what we wanted to go through. If you have any questions, try to reach out to us. Send us a comment. Um, find us on the on our website. Um, and if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. I hope you have a great day.